Hi there! Welcome back to my channel! And okay, my question is how are you all doing now in preparing for your homeschool? It's getting more exciting or should I say stressful because you know that magmalapit ng magbukas yung school year. And I hope that this um, homeschooling series helps you and guides you in preparing for your homeschool journey. Okay, and for your homeschool opening. So, meron din tayong homeschool opening. So, I just hope nakatulong kami. Um, if nakatulong tong homeschooling series na to, please leave a comment below. So, we would be encouraged to, you know, to, to uh, make more videos um, about our homeschool journey. And we are now in the last leg or, or yung third part of the step-by-step -step guide to start homeschooling series. And I'm just so excited to share um, this with you, yung ating last part. And I hope that you would stay up until the end of the video. So as I've mentioned it earlier, that this is the third part of the step-by-step -step guide to start homeschooling series. So if you haven't watched or hindi nyo pa nakita yung first part and second part, um, I'm gonna put the links uh, down in the description box. And so, uh, panoorin nyo siya so you could follow through. Before we proceed to our topic today, let me just show you our roadmap again. Okay, so this is our roadmap. Uh, the, the first part talks about deciding whether you will go independent or be enrolled in a homeschool provider. And then we also talked about uh, the learning styles and the methods that we can use in our teaching. And then in the second part, we talked about choosing a curriculum, scheduling, and lesson planning. And so today, we will be having our last step. So this is assessment and evaluation. So, let's talk about assessment and evaluation and how we do it in our homeschool. But this is where the part where our hearts will be exposed because this is where we would see na the result of our hard work, yung time and effort at yung puso na binigay mo para sa homeschooling. Now, if hindi maganda yung result, uh, the question is, how would you respond to the situation? Or yung mas matinding question is, how would you look at your child? So, it's better kung maset na yung expectations mo right before the school year starts para uh, maset din yung mga puso natin kung ano man yung magiging resulta ng ating homeschooling. Okay, so if hindi maganda yung naging result within your evaluation, how would you look at your child? Would you still see him or see her as a blessing from the Lord? Or uh, you would see it na, oh, ano bang ginawa ko? Okay, so this is now the time where you uh, have to sit down and really assess um, ano yung nangyari, um, ano ba yung mga ginawa namin na hindi dapat, or kaya naman, ano ba yung mga dapat ginawa namin during the school year. So, ano nga ba yung classroom or homeschool assessment? So, yung classroom or homeschool assessment is important to the teaching and learning process. This is used to know the student learning and it helps also the teachers or kaya in our case, the parent teachers to know kung ano yung mga strategies na kailangan i-improve or kaya kung ano yung mga teaching methods na kailangan i-improve para maintindihan ng mga anak natin yung particular lesson. So this assessment is usually anchored to the learning standards. Now these learning standards, uh, pwede yung makuha to sa mga homeschool providers nyo. Magbibigay sila ng course study. Nandun na lahat yung mga learning standards na kailangan na ma-achieve ng mga bata. Now kung ikaw naman ay independent homeschooler, you can get these learning standards sa 
uh, Depart Department of Education or DepEd. So, nandun sa website nila yung mga curriculum guides na pwede yung gamitin. Nandun na yung mga learning standards, yung mga core standards, and yung mga key frameworks na pwede gamitin into your homeschooling. So, when it comes to our assessment, uh, we use four components. And these components are also part of the grading system. So, uh, yung components in ng grading system ay pwede siya na iba-iba from different homeschool providers. So, tanong nyo lang sa mga homeschool providers nyo kung ano yung mga components sa grading system nila. Now, if you are an independent homeschooler, ganun din, i-anchor mo din yung grading system mo sa ginagamit naman ng Department of Education. But for us, we're using four components. So, these are written works, performance tests, or performance tasks, um, summative tests, and character assessment because uh, we are a character-based school. So, character talaga yung importante at kasama din siya sa grading system. So, first is yung written works. So, yung written works, ito yung pinaka-simple at pinaka-classical tool na ginagamit in assessment. These written works are done in written form. So, example nito ay yung mga quizzes, um, exercises, written reports, worksheets, or um, any activities basta in written form siya. Okay, next ay yung performance tasks. So, yung performance tasks ay ina-assess ngayon yung learning na pwede ng isang estudyante, individual, or kaya naman pwede siyang collaborative or group. Ang examples ng performance tasks uh, done in individual ay, for example, yung mga science experiments na, pwede, na individual na ginagawa. And pwede din naman na uh, pag narrate ng poem, or kaya pagkanta na siya lang mag-isa, or pagsayaw na siya lang mag-isa, or kaya in physical education. So, paano yung a certain sports, paano ginagawa? For, for example, yung arnis, so it can be done individually also. So, ito yung performance tasks done in individually. Pero pwede din naman yung performance tasks ay ginagawa siya collaboratively or in group. So, for example, yung mga group presentation, um, research projects, or kaya naman um, yung sa singing, pwede silang in a choir. Tapos, pwede din namang dance group. At saka yung mga experiments, it can also be done collaboratively or in group. Next ay yung quarterly assessment. So, this assessment naman measures yung learning ng isang estudyante um, in a particular quarter. This quarterly assessment can also be done as objective tests or ito yung mga written exams. O kaya naman, pwede din siyang performance-based exams. Ito naman yung mga oral presentations or oral examinations. Okay, so there is only one quarterly exam or quarterly assessment na ginagawa namin in a given quarter. Pero there are several written works at saka mga performance um, tasks na ginagawa namin in a given quarter. Okay, so, but now ang question is how do we uh, grade our students or our kids objectively when it comes to performance tasks? Kasi hindi naman madaling gradean yung performance tasks. Not unlike yung mga written exams na pag sinagutan ng bata, tapos makikita mo yung result kasi um, kung ano yung score, iyon na yung grade niya. But what about pag performance tasks or kaya naman performance-based yung examinations? How do we measure it? How do we do grading? Okay, we use rubrics and checklists para uh, mag-grade namin yung mga anak namin objectively when it comes to performance-based examinations or doon sa mga performance tasks. Ano ba yung rubrics? Yung rubrics ay written criteria siya. And then yung mga written criteria na to ay meron siyang corresponding scores. So like for example, um, yung 4 ay um, outstanding effort. Yung 3, that's good effort. Yung 2 ay some effort. And then yung 1, it's just little effort. So, madali ngayon siyang, uh, mas madali siyang grade dan kasi meron kang mga scores for a particular criteria.
So, objectively mo ngayon nagigradean yung estudyante or yung anak mo. Ano naman yung checklist? So, yung checklist ay isa din siyang tool um, in assessment na ginagamit sa isang estudyante para um, makita mo kung na-meet niya lahat ng requirements na kailangan sa particular subject or particular assignment or particular tasks. So, yun yung checklist. Okay, and today I will show you how we do it, how we do assessment and evaluation. So, meron din kaming mga forms and rubrics na pwede nyo din gamitin. So, I'm gonna give it to you also. Uh, I will just put the link in the description box below. Pwede nyo siyang iprint at gamitin in your homeschool. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so now I'm gonna share to you our, uh, yung assessment an evaluation na ginagawa namin. So, this is also my homeschool planner and I'm gonna show you something. So, ginawan ako ng anak ko ng cover page. So, ayan. Sabi niya, Grace, I love you, mom. And then, meron siyang mga drawings dyan sa cover page. Nilagay ko din yung mga assessment forms namin dito sa homeschool planner para magkasama na sila. Hindi na ako maghahanap ako nasa ang binder yung ano yung mga assessment forms. Okay? So, let's start. Lagyan ko lang siya ng ibang color para alam ko kung nasaan siya. Okay, this one, I... Okay, so this is from the parents' orientation. Uh, but this is from 2019 pa kasi wala kami pang orientation now. So, ito yung parents' orientation. So, important ito. That's why I put it here. Um, nandito, in-explain lahat ng uh, mga kailangan naming gawin in our homeschooling. Uh, meron dyan yung vision statement at uh, mission statement and core values and then academic guidelines. Tapos, code of discipline. We are actually anchored to Bright Sparks Homeschool. Um, uh, our location or uh, base kami uh, yung Bright Sparks Homeschool sa Bulacan. Uh, check nyo din yung Bright Sparks Homeschool. Alright? So, that's for the parents' orientation. Okay. So, there. And then, here naman, ito yung curriculum schedule. But this is for grade 1. So, si Zoe is turning grade 2. Um, wala pa din kaming curriculum guide for grade 2. Kasi, hindi pa rin kami nag-start... Um, ng, ng school year. Hindi pa nag-start yung school year. Okay? So, this is the curriculum schedule for grade 1. Okay, next on uh, the assessment form ay itong um, school year at a glance. So, itong school year at a glance, this is just a calendar ng uh, July 2020 to June 2021. So, I got this from My Joy Field Life by Sarah Avila. So I'll um you may we might check it out. Ang dami din yang mga forms doon. Uh, so this is ano lang siya, um calendar, school calendar from July to June 2021. Nagawa ko dito is that um I just like for example, kung nag-start yung school ng August 24, is a shade ko lang yung August 24 para alam ko na nata, na na nag-school kami on that day. So, ganun din. If 25, 26, and so on and so forth. Okay? That's a school year at a glance. Next ay yung aming attendance record. So, yung attendance record, um, sineshade ko lang din yung kung anong day kami pumasok. Okay, yung next ay, okay, this one ay yung checklist. Kindergarten um, readiness checklist. I got this naman from teachingmama.org. So, basically, ito ay checklist na, for example, ng mga skills na necessary na ma matutunan ng isang preschooler. Okay, so for example, yung verbal skills, listening skills, reading readiness, alphabet, writing... So basically, ito ay checklist siya. So, so check mo lang siya kung ato bang um, correctly states his or her gender and age ay natutunan na ng anak mo or ng anak ko. So, I'm, I'm gonna check it out lang. Okay? So, that's um, for um, Yosh. 
preschooler. So this one naman is Chloe. So I got this from um, twinkle.com. And dito naman, working towards expected and then greater death. So yun yung mga criteria. Kikita nyo kung nasa na ba siya, ano na yung understanding niya when it comes to uh, number and place value or addition and subtraction. Ano na yung understanding niya when it comes to multiplication and division. And lalo na sa fractions, okay? Ako yata walang understanding sa fractions. <laughs> okay, so, or ano yung understanding niya when it comes to geometry and shape? And then geometry, position, and direction. So, that's for math. And then this one is for writing naman. So, this is the writing checklist. So, ayan, writing checklist. Okay, now, this is now the um, course description worksheet. So, eto na ngayon yung um, kailangan mong i-fill up. Yung course description worksheet, nandun lang yung name of student. And then, yung course title or yung subject. Like, for example, English. And then, the school year is 2020 to 2021. Now, these are the learning standards na kailangan i-attain or i-achieve ng bata in a particular school year. So, meron dyang core learning standards, key, uh, key stage standard, and grade level standard. Curriculum and references. So, ilalagay nyo lang dito. I-list nyo lang lahat ng mga curriculum and references na pinagkukunan nyo for that particular subject. Okay? And so, now, this is important. So, you have to plan ahead naman yung mga assessment tools and education uh, evaluation tools na gagamitin nyo. Like, for example, uh, with uh, English, okay, so with English, ang gagamitin kong assessment tools ay written exams. I'm gonna have also reporting and presentation, projects, and yung portfolio. So, evaluation tools ay summative tests, standardized tests, oral tests, and practical examinations. Yung standardized tests ay, you can get this actually sa uh, website ng DepEd kasi meron sila dong mga uh, diagnostic tests at achievement tests. So, pwede kayong kumuha doon at yun yung gamitin nyo just to know lang kung naintindihan talaga ng bata yung subject. Okay, that's course description worksheet. So, lahat ng mga subjects nyo, I suggest na meron siyang course description worksheet para lang you would know kung um, na- na- na achieve nyo yung learning standards for that particular subject. Okay, next ay okay, so dito ko ngayon kinuha or binase yung nilagay ko doon sa course description worksheet. Uh, ito yung core learning standard, key standards, key stage standard, yung grade grade level standards. Um, sa bawat curriculum guide na pinoprovide ng Department of Education, nandoon yung mga itong tatlong binanggit ko. So, pwede nyo yung kopyahin doon sa course description worksheet. Okay, so this one naman is the general assessment sheet or yung rubric. So, ito yung example ng rubric namin. So, nandiyan yung student name, date, date of assessment, final grade. Okay, so ito yung sinasabi ko kanina yung four, ang, ang, ang ano niya, ang ibig sabihin ay outstanding effort. Yung isa naman ay good effort, yung three. And then yung two ay some effort. Yung one ay little effort. Okay? And then I have here yung self-assessment. So, yung self-assessment ay yung bata ang magsasagot nito. So, ang possible points niya dito ay 24 points. Tapos, meron din uh, teacher's assessment. So, before, last year, wala akong self-assessment. Um, it's just teacher's assessment. But now, because Zoe is in grade 2, I just want to know kung paano niya ina-assess yung sarili niya. And para din makita niya, okay, kailangan kong mag-improve sa ganitong... Um, ag sa ganitong aspect, kailangan akong mag-improve dito sa ganitong subject. So, kaya nilagay ko na yung self-assessment. Okay, teacher's assessment and then total points. So, meron ako dito sa notes. Okay, this is how we compute it. Um, assess your students or students using this rubric. So, this rubric includes student self-assessment and teacher's assessment. So, yung total ng assessment ay 48 points. Okay, so... 
Um, however, if you choose lang naman to do the teacher's assessment, the total point is 24. So, to get the final grade, so self-assessment plus teacher's assessment over the highest possible scores or points times 100. Okay? Tapos, if you have comments, just write here your comments. Okay, and then total points and then you put, if na-compute mo na siya here at lagay mo naman sa final grade, yung grade niya. Okay, next, uh, yung assessment sheet. So, it's the same then, same principle, the same concept as that of the general assessment sheet. Okay? Tapos, yung written report naman na rubric. So, eto na, mas specific siya kasi written report na siya. So, ibig sabihin, I'm grading him or I'm grading her with uh, the written report na ginawa niya. So, the same din siya, outstanding effort, good effort, some effort, or little effort. Pero, um, here in this part, wala na yung um, self-assessment. Um, I, just, I just put the teacher's assessment. Okay? Tapos, iba na rin yung, yung criteria na meron dito. Um, it's connected na ngayon to dun sa written report. Okay? So, total points, the same way as um, kung paano kunin yung grade, yung final grade. So, when you compute it here, you just put the final grade here. Okay. Next ay yung, okay, self-assessment sheet. Okay, ito yung um, dinagdag ko ngayon, school year. So, meron akong self-assessment. This is for the teacher-parent. Okay, so... Sa atin to, mga parents, okay? So, meron tayong self-assessment din. So, it's necessary that after a school year, i-assess din natin, evaluate din natin yung mga sarili natin kung ano yung, um, ano, kung paano tayo naging, okay, teacher-parent sa ating mga anak this school year. So, ganun din. Gagrade din tayo ng ating mga anak, ating mga estudyante, and then meron din tayong self-assessment dito. Okay, so, iba, iba din criteria. So, pwede nyo din baguhin yung mga criteria na uh, mga nakalagay dito at uh, kung ano yung gusto nyong criteria na ilagay. Okay? So, tapos meron ako dito, instead of grade, okay, so wala naman tayong grades, pero assess further lang. So, nakalagay dyan, what are the things that we need to improve in our homeschool? So, eto na yung we, we need, so tayong buong pamilya, ano yung kailangan nating i-improve in our homeschool and number two what are the things that my teacher or teachers need to improve so kung yung asawa natin ay nagtuturo din ano din yung mga kailangan niyang i-improve and tayo din, ano yung mga kailangan nating i-improve okay, so that way we can be a better diba, or the best teacher parent for our kids so, that's the self-assessment sheet. Okay, so this one, last uh, page, ay yung computation of summative assessment. So, for grades 1 to 12. So, check nyo na lang yung DepEd um, website para makita nyo lahat ng mga to. Okay, but if you want ma uh, for me to make a video on how I compute grades, so leave a comment below. That's the uh, last part of for the last page for our assessment. Alright. Alright, so this is the end of the third part of the step-by-step -step guide to start homeschooling series. So I just hope na naging worthwhile yung panunood nyo ng videos ng homeschooling series uh, for the past uh, three weeks. At sana ay na-encourage namin kayo at natulungan namin kayo to jumpstart your homeschooling. Um, we just hope then that uh, naging part kami ng homeschool journey nyo. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so you will get notified whenever we upload new videos every week. So thanks again for watching. Uh, thank you for staying with me up until the end of this video. And see you next time. God bless everyone. Bye!